part of Singapore Cyber Day 2021, we have various organizations to share with us on career advice as well as on cyber hygiene. In today's video, we have Pravin from HTCIA, who's going to share with us more regarding the, the topic. Pravin, please. Hi, Sean. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So uh, HTCIA Singapore is uh, part of an international organization. Um, the Singapore chapter has been open in Singapore for the past five years, uh, but HTCIA itself has been around for decades. And uh, a lot of what we do in the association is around learning and training for the industry, uh, specifically to high-tech crime investigators and digital investigations. So uh, without further ado, we will go into the questions now. So first thing I would like to ask is, uh, Pravin, why do you think that cybersecurity is important to everyone, including the primary school students? That's a really great question, Sean. So technology is proliferating into every aspect of our lives. Now, especially for primary school students, learning in schools is very different from how it was 10 years ago. And it's completely unrecognizable from how it was 20 to 30 years ago. Right. Technology is now not just a key tool in learning, but students are also exposed to it in their day-to-day -day lives from mobile phones to smart appliances. Now, the Internet of Things has made it vital for students to understand cybersecurity and keep themselves safe in an ever-connected world. Okay, so, uh, so that being said, what makes you choose um, to work in the cybersecurity industry? Well, personally, I did not choose a cyber, uh, cyber as a career. I was actually drawn to digital investigations very early on. And as a result of my choice to be in digital forensics, I realized that learning and understanding cybersecurity was a crucial part of my work. Uh, knowing the fundamentals of cyber helps me be a better investigator. How long do you think you both stay in this career? I hope to be able to stay in the career for a long time. I've spent more than a decade developing my skills in cyber, and I hope to be able to give back to the community as I become more experienced in the years to come. Right, so um, in order to be in this uh, cyber industry, what skills do you think people need to have? There are numerous skills that apply. Uh, to me, the most important is the passion for continuous learning. Technology in this day and age really changes at a breakneck speed, right? And you know, every new technology that is introduced presents an opportunity for both legitimate use and malicious actors uh, who are often the first to adopt technology for nefarious purposes. So it really has to be a, a continuous learning um, pathway for, for everyone. Okay, so uh, what are the top three things that you enjoy in this industry? Well, I would have to say I, it's about being at the forefront of technology understanding how system works, uh, you know, how systems work uh, and interact with each other. Um, and for me as a digital investigator, it's really understanding the motivation that people have uh, in committing cyber crimes. So what is the most depressing thing that has happened to you in your cyber career? And uh, how do you manage to overcome that? I, I would say one case comes to mind. Uh, and this was both depressing and enlightening at the same time. Now, there was a matter that I worked on many years ago for a client in Singapore, and the client had a cybersecurity incident for which we were called in. So we, we successfully identified the root cause, we plugged the gaps, and we provided recommendations to the client to improve their cybersecurity posture. And less than a month later, we were called in again. Right? And basically what had happened was they had failed to implement the measures we had recommended uh, and they were very quick to blame us for the repeat attack. Now, as we were performing the second round of remediations, we realized that the company really had a culture of blame and pushing the buck, right? The company expected to never be attacked and they really did not take any responsibility for training the staff to look out for simple things like, you know, phishing emails, malicious links, as they expected that the technology they had invested in like their firewalls and SIEMs would do all the work and just be 100% accurate all the time. Uh, and I think to me, this is the biggest misunderstanding in the field of cyber, right? It's not just about systems and technology. It is about people and how people interface with the technology. Cybersecurity is not just a subject, it's a mindset. And companies need to understand that being cyber secure starts from the individual. Pretty sure COVID-19 affected you in your work some way or another. So how do you manage between family, work, 
personal life and your volunteer work as the Singapore chapter president at HTCIA? Uh, again, another great question, Sean. Uh, it has really been challenging, but it's also presented opportunities to better manage my time. So, you know, before the pandemic, activities like work, family time, and, you know, the volunteer work I did with HTCIA were very easy to separate, right? Because they were very much location-based, right? So you would be in office for work, you'd be at home for family time and at an event uh, or, or an event venue for volunteer work. So the, pandem the pandemic has really shifted this to where basically everything is run out of home. And it has really pushed me to improve my productivity you know, while ensuring that I still clearly demarcate the time I spend on each activity. Sounds like a positive experience. So let's say 10 years ago, did you ever see yourself being the HTCIA Singapore chapter president? Uh, definitely not. You know, 10 years ago, there wasn't even a Singapore chapter to begin with. So, you know, we have really, we are really proud to have come this far and be able to set up a Singapore chapter, which has been active for the past five years. So how did the role of the HTCIA Singapore Chapter President help you in your career? I would say that it has helped me broaden my perspective and understanding of the industry a lot better. Through HTCIA, I've been able to connect with other great associations like AISP and meet really talented individuals in the field. Um, you know, and everyone presents different perspectives and really contribute to a vibrant and thriving cybersecurity ecosystem. So uh, we, we, we talked about the 10 years ago. So where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Hopefully I still see myself in Singapore. I, you know, the direction and the vision that the Singapore government has is really unique and it's very forward looking. Uh, I think in many ways, Singapore is already a leader in cybersecurity and it's well on its way to cement its position as a cybersecurity hub in the region, right? The strategic approach only means that Singapore will be an exciting place to be for budding cybersecurity professionals and for existing cybersecurity professionals to hone their skills. Yeah, that, that being said, uh, we, can, we can be pretty sure that more people will be uh, looking to venture into this industry. So what do you think students can do in planning their future pathway? My advice to students would be to spend a day thinking about where you would like to see yourself in the next five to 10 years. Um, the good thing about cyber is that the opportunities are abundant, right? And the foundational skills that you learn in school are transferable for a lot of cyber-related roles. So I would recommend finding something that interests you, uh, keep yourself engaged and build yourself in that area. And if at some point in time you feel that it's really not for you, you can always take a step back and revisit your interests and passion. Now, the field of cyber is vast and sooner or later you'll find something that excites you. So uh, in the meantime, right, what, what do you recommend students do if they want to learn more about the cybersecurity as well as the industry way while they are still in school? Just keep reading. Just read, 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 read more and more, right? I mean, with the internet, there are just numerous articles, there are numerous posts, there's a tremendous number of news sites, there's an amazing number of learning portals that's available that you can rely on to learn more about cyber. And, you know, it's like I said before, it's continuous learning. The learning never stops. Yep, that's true. The learning never stops. So what do you think is the biggest difference between learning about cybersecurity in school and uh, applying what they have learned back in the workplace? I think that goes back to the point I made about the rapid rate of change in technology. So I've been out of school for more than a decade. And most of what I've learned is either irrelevant or it has been updated, right? To me, school sets a good foundation for learning and provides you with the requisite skills that you need for the workplace. But it is important to understand the nuances of on-the-job learning, which will keep you relevant. So um, what are the new cybersecurity roles that are currently emerging in the sector? From what I've seen, I think there are more and more roles that are looking for data scientists in the field of cyber. And this is, um, I think this is, quite understandable, considering that as the cybersecurity field matures, the focus is really moving to data-driven, intelligent decision-making. Uh, and having the requisite skills in the field of data science, I think it contributes tremendously to the cybersecurity environment. So let's, let's talk about your role. Uh, when you first enter the workforce, uh, how do you navigate your career and uh, find the role that you are actually interested in? What a lot of people don't know about me is that I actually started my career in a financial institution uh, and I was doing operations in a bank. 
Um, a few years in, I was actually presented with the opportunity to make a career switch to digital forensics and cyber. Um, and it was something that actually excited me at that time, and it obviously continues to do so today. So I made the choice to take the plunge because the opportunity was there. And after I did, I committed myself to that decision. Uh, and I would advise that, you know, a role is really what you want to make of it, right? And throughout my career, I've seen people with similar backgrounds and education take on similar roles, but one thrives and then, but, you know, another person who has the same background and same educational, you know, certifications, uh, they find that same role a struggle, right? And to me, I think career satisfaction is really about how much you put into the role and how much you make it your own. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that you were you was you were presented with the opportunity to make a career switch. So I assume that it it, it was uh, someone that you met that would uh, bring you where you are, like maybe a mentor. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a very very strong believer in that a good mentor will really help you thrive. And I had the excellent fortune of being taught and mentored by a boss uh, who was very patient. He was very knowledgeable. Uh, and most importantly, he was very keen to share his knowledge, right? Uh, under his guidance and mentorship, I was able to progress in my career very, very quickly. Uh, and, you know, I was able to use my skill sets to make an impact on many organizations and individuals who have benefited from our work. So even though I don't work with uh, my mentor currently uh, or on a daily basis, I I'm, he still is my mentor and he continues to guide me in my career in areas where I'll benefit the most. All right, so uh, to close out this topic, what is the best career advice that uh, you have ever received in your career? Well, I've been told if you're passionate about what you're doing, it will never feel like work. So with that, we have come to an end to uh, today's session. So uh, thank you, Pravin, for, for your uh, engagement in this uh, video. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sean.